Hello and welcome, my name is William. Today we are taking a look at a dynamic programming problem which involves tiling dominoes on a grid. This is one of those problems I really struggled with when I was first starting to learn about dynamic programming. It opened my eyes on how to think about tiling problems, which is why I want to share my solution with you today. The problem we are trying to tackle is very simple. It asks, in how many ways can you tile a 3 by n rectangle grid with 2 by 1 dominoes where n is an integer between 0 and 30? On this slide, you can see one particular tiling of how to tile a board with 3 rows and 12 columns. But as you can imagine, there are numerous distinct tilings to account for. Let's look at some solutions for low values of n. When n equals 1, meaning there is one column, then no tilings are possible because we cannot fill the grid using only 2 by 1 dominoes. But when n equals 2, there are a total of 3 possible tilings shown on this slide. When n equals 3, we see that there are again 0 possible tilings. In fact, you quickly realize that it is never possible to tile a board when n is odd, since there's always going to be a gap you can't fill with the dominoes. However, when n equals 4, we can make 11 distinct tilings drawn below. Alright, I have explained the problem and have given some examples. Now it's your turn to give an attempt at the solution. You can find this problem on CADIS with the ID try tiling displayed on the slide and in the video description. If you get stuck, I have a few hints to help guide you in the right direction without spoiling the solution. My first hint is to see if you can set up a DP table with the column position as one of the dimensions, since we need an answer for each column index. My next hint is for you to think about all the possible states that can arise from one column slice. In your first attempt to find a solution, it's always a good idea to look for some kind of pattern or recurrence for the total number of tilings for each value of n. Unfortunately, for this problem, looking for a pattern takes a long time and can be a very error-prone process. Counting all the tilings for the first few values of n results in quite a large number of tilings, not to mention that it's quite difficult to distinguish between unique tilings. So even though there does exist a recurrence, I want to explore a more pragmatic approach. Should you encounter a similar problem with perhaps different tiles, or you need to improvise during an interview, since our problem asks about finding the number of tilings for each column position, one of the first things you should ask yourself is, does knowing all the ways to tile the board up to column i help me find all the tilings for column i plus 1? The answer is yes. We can compute the answer for column i plus 1 from column i, but to do so, we need more information than just the number of full column states up to index i. We will also want to keep track of all partially filled column states up to index i to generate index i plus 1. The motivation behind tracking all partially filled states is that partially filled states can lead to full states by adding one or more dominoes. So if we don't track all partially filled states, then we won't be able to count the number of distinct tilings. The next question you're probably asking is, what do I mean by a partially filled state? By this, I mean a tiling that has been completely filled by 2 by 1 dominoes up to index i minus 1, but the current column in question remains partially filled. For example, on this slide are all partially filled states for the column at index 3. The important thing to remark is that all columns before index 3 are currently filled. This is important because it ensures that as we try and build off these partial states that we are not leaving any holes behind. 
If we inspect each column, you will see that there are three cells per column and two possibilities for each cell, tiled or not tiled, for a total of eight states per column. I'm going to assign a number to each of the possible states. This will make it easier to refer to each state going forward. You will notice that I am essentially mapping the base2 binary representation of each number to the state it represents. So state 0 is the empty state. State 1 is the state with one tiled block on the top row. State 2 has one tiled block in the middle row. State 3 has two cells tiled and so on. The goal of what we are trying to achieve is to count all possible partial states column by column until we reach the end and know how many full tilings there are in total. With the setup we have right now, the last lingering mystery, which I haven't yet explained, is how we are going to transition between these partial column states. But before we dive into that, it should be noted that not all states you see can be tiled by 2 by 1 dominoes. This is okay. States that cannot be tiled simply won't contribute to the total number of tilings. For example, the state circled in red cannot actually be tiled, but we track its existence nonetheless. Let's start taking a look at how we do state transitions. Suppose we want to know the number of ways to make state one at column position i from column position i minus one. State one is the state with one tiled cell on the top row, highlighted in purple. One way to build state one is by including all previously known ways to construct state six in the previous column while adding a horizontal domino. Now, let's look at how we can count the number of ways to make state two at column position i from column position i minus one. We can count all the ways to make state two by including all the previously known ways to construct state five in column i minus one while including a horizontal domino in the middle row. Now let's see how we can count the number of ways to make state three. State three is the state with the top two cells tiled. One way to sum the number of different tilings for state three is by including all previously known ways to construct state seven at column i minus one while adding a vertical domino. However, we can additionally create state three by placing two horizontal blocks stacked on top of each other. We need to make sure that we include all possible ways of creating the different states. This is so that we can accurately count the total number of unique tilings. However, it is important to note that it would be incorrect to place two vertical dominoes to create state three. When we included the vertical domino in the first example for state three, that domino overlaps with the two vertical dominoes here. So we would be duplicating states and that is something we need to watch out for. Next up, we want to know the number of ways to make state four. We can count the number of ways to make state four by including all previously known ways to construct state three in the last column while adding a horizontal domino. This would be symmetric to how we count the number of tilings for state one. Now let's look at how we can count the number of ways to create state five. To count the number of ways to tile state five, we can reuse the number of ways to make state two in column i minus one and add two horizontal dominoes to the top and bottom rows. Next, let's have a look at how to create state six, which has the two bottom cells tiled we can tile state six, similar to how we counted the number of ways to make state three. We can reuse the full state in the previous column and add a vertical domino. However, we must also count the number of ways to make state six by adding on the number of tilings in which we place two horizontal dominoes. Again, we don't want to place two vertical dominoes to avoid duplicating states. Now let's look at how we can count the number of full state tilings, which is the state we ultimately care about. 
One way to count the number of ways to make state 7 is by including all previously known ways to construct state 6 and then place two dominoes in a rotated L shape. By symmetry, we can also tile state 7 using state 3 in the previous column. And the final way to tile the full state is by placing three horizontal dominoes stacked on top of each other. The last thing we need to think about is how do we tile state zero, the empty state? This may sound like a strange thing to do, but it's certainly an edge case we need to handle. The number of empty tilings for column i is equal to the number of tilings in the previous column, column i minus one. Effectively, the full state in the previous column and the empty state in the current column are the same state and should always have the same number of tilings. Now let's go over what we learned and have a look at the bigger picture of how states are generated from other states. First, we know that the number of full states in the previous column corresponds to the number of empty states in the next column. Second, we also know that state one can be constructed from state six by adding a horizontal tile. Third, that state two can be created from state five by adding a horizontal domino. Fourth, we also know that we can create state three by placing two dominoes on their side based on state four. I'm going to let the animation play for the rest of the transitions. Try to follow along. In the end, if we look at all the arrows we have, each of them represents a transition. When we go to code this, we want to apply all transitions column by column, starting with the leftmost column until we fill the board. The answer to the number of tilings for any given value of n is always found in state 7, the full state for each column position. All right, now that I have explained the solution, let's have a look at some of the pseudocode. The only parameter for the solve function is n, the size of the board. The first thing I do is initialize a 2D table with n plus one rows and eight columns. Then I set the number of tilings for a board with size zero to have one possible tiling. This initial value sets into motion all the transitions to follow. Then loop over all the columns between one and n inclusive. First, make the number of empty states in the current column equal to the number of full states in the previous column. Then for state one, include all state six values in the previous column. Next up are state two and state five. I did mention this earlier, but it's actually impossible to generate states two and five using only two by one dominoes. Since these states don't end up contributing to the total number of tilings, we can simply comment them out. We know that state three can be generated from state seven and state four. By symmetry with state one, state four can be counted from state three in the previous column Again, in symmetry with state three, state six can be generated from states seven and one in the previous column. And lastly, state seven can be created from states zero, three, and six. And the very last thing to do is return the number of tilings stored in our DP table. Awesome, that's all I have for tiling dominoes. Please like this video if you learned something and subscribe for more content. I'll catch you later.